This is the new to crypto, intro to crypto, I should say, track, and we are talking about an introduction to Web 3.0. Uh, fantastic topic. I just got to chat a little bit with Darren. By the way, we all need to congratulate Darren. He was married in March. His thank you. Wife. Congratulations, Darren. Thank you, thank you. I actually just married into a Catholic family. Whoa. Yeah, and that's my first exposure to Catholics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it was a, it was a good one. Um, awesome. I love my wife. Shout out to Catherine nice. back in Houston. Very nice. Well, I'm going to offer a little intro to Darren, and then we're going to let him get started. This is Darren Chu. He graduated from the University of Southern California with a degree in industrial engineering. He then spent five years as a consultant and advisory manager for Ernst & Young in Chicago. A crypto enthusiast from 2020, Darren saw trajectories the crypto blockchain world was about to take, and in that same year, he left the security of a corporate America job to join young startups in the crypto space, ultimately focusing on the area of internet and data privacy. Most recently, he served as the leader of education at The Secret Network, which was the first blockchain with customizable privacy with a particular focus on Web 3.0. Please welcome Darren Chu. Thank you, thank you. So when they had me talk about what is Web 3, that's pretty daunting, to be honest, because you're basically talking what is the future, and how do I know what the future is going to entail, especially if I'm only focused on a specific thing that I'm passionate about. I don't know where the metaverse is going to take us, I don't know where DeFi is going to take us. There's people there who are incredibly intelligent in those spaces pushing the, the space forward. That guy earlier, he answers some insanely difficult questions with ease. And I, I, was, I was cheering him on because uh, that's, that, that's an avenue that I don't have the expertise in. And that's not the avenue I need to be having the expertise in. So where do I hail from? Hail from Secret, secret Network and Alter. Secret University uh, was, a, was a slip because actually that's the platform that me and my friends are actually building at the moment. Um, it's an educational platform for developers to learn about how to build private smart contracts. Um, and so Secret University is the entity I'm, I'm forming, but Secret Network is the wider network that has been doing some amazing things. So we're talking about people who uh, taught at MIT they taught the blockchain space at MIT. Uh, they led a blockchain course. They, they part of the, they, their entire team that's building the network is special defense forces uh, at the, uh, in Israel. Um, they're the top guys who are focused on uh, advancing cryptography in this space. And they built the very first blockchain that not only allows for uh, a public transparency, uh, so everybody can understand and trust the network, but also data privacy, which is the aspect of making sure you have the right access controls so that when sensitive data needs to pass through a blockchain, that's the stuff that needs to be protected. Even though things are still transparent and open, there's sensitive information that needs to be protected. Uh, working for education for Secret Network, pivoted over to Alter. Alter is a decentralized application being built on Secret Network. What they're doing is they're building the very first private and fully encrypted blockchain communications protocol that allows people to transfer files, transfer day-to-day um, uh, -day communications as if I'm talking to you right here. I don't need to, uh, I can be across the world from you, but the only people who ever hear our conversation is me and you because that's the kind of security that, that we have and then that's the kind of communication that we have, right? So that's what we're building. Um, the, the, we're building it on Secret Network, and the, the reason why that's so cool is because the Defe Department of Defense just recently held a hackathon across the entire department called the Bravo Hackathon, and then the team that won it, they built a solution using Secret Network to migrate their confidential data for the Department of Defense. These are the guys that we're building for. And I'm supposed to be the smart one in the room. You know, no way, no way. So uh, when I flew in here, it was a little bit momentous. I was thinking about, wow, Valley Forge sounds a, like a pretty big deal. Uh, I, I wanted to check it out, you know? Guess who was here before? George Washington. 
George Washington was here in this very own Sheraton Hotel with his troops back in 1777. All right, these guys froze to death. There was 2,000 deaths, 12,000 men trying to build a camp here because in Britain, man, they were hounding everybody. All of Philadelphia, if you don't live in Valley Forge, you are living in British land. Like, that's where they were, right? They froze to death. And why did they freeze to death? Obviously, they, they, they froze to death to, to support democracy. They, they were here to, to show you their stance, and they're also here to uh, build a new ecosystem, a new economy, a new way of government. These were the guys that were doing it. We're also, we're also in a winter right now in the Web3 space. It's tough. If you'd recognize that chart, it's red. That's Bitcoin, right? We're in, a, we're in a, what they consider a crypto winner right now. It is a hard time for teams like us that are trying to build because, man, there's a lot of scams that are going down. There's a lot of, like, the markets all tied. To, a lot of it is tied to Bitcoin at the moment because of cryptocurrencies. And, and anybody working in this space is going to tell you it's, it's hard right now. And either they're affected directly, or they know people being affected, or somebody has had their personal friends lost capital because this is the kind of space that's unregulated at the moment. FTX. FTX was a major uh, central entity uh, that promised users will protect your money. And instead, what did they do? They, they used th those Bitcoins that those users thought they were holding, they used that collateral to leverage on other investments, to leverage on other people, to invest in politicians, and, and funds are all gone. Because these are the leaders, the centralized leaders, who are suppo supposedly leading the space, when there's actually people who are speaking up saying, that's not the fair way to do it. There's, there's exchanges that are saying, you guys have, uh, FTX, you've failed. Let's be more transparent in the, in, the, in the voice of Web3. Let's be more transparent. Let's open up all of our books so our users can see if we're saying we're hold custody for your, for your community, we hold your, your community's money. This is CZ Binance. He owns one of the major, major uh, exchanges um, across crypto. And then Brian Armstrong, uh, Coinbase, you guys know him. Jesse Powell, Kraken, those guys, those guys are, those are guys are the real Web3 guys. Not the FTX who people, they promise you um, a protection and ownership of something, but they're not really living by Web3 ideals. And that's what I'm here to talk about, Web3 ideals. Because it's not the technology. People will tell you it's the technology, blockchain this, blockchain that, but it's the values that really make Web3, Web3. Where's our money? Mt. Gox. So Mt. Gox, uh, you won't believe it. They, they're an exchange that had 70% of everyone's Bitcoin at one point, when Bitcoin was worth $300 back in 2014. Mt. Gox. Bitcoin survived Mt. Gox, where everyone thought Bitcoin was going to go to zero. We're now sitting at, we were at one six, what, 65,000? Dropped down to, what, uh, 16,000 right now? I think we'll survive. That's the kind of mentality that the space is. We're entrenched. Meanwhile, huge big tech. Big tech, they, they got it all. They want the market share. They want all of it, right? Big tech's getting into the game, right? So you got PayPal. You're curious about crypto? We'll hold it for you. You got Facebook completely switching the game. We're no longer Facebook. We're meta, right? Uh, launching NFTs on their Instagram. You know, these guys are moving in in this space because they know the infrastructures reap. This is the future, right? Google, blockchain node engine. They're setting up the infrastructure. Look at the date, October 27th, 2022. That's yesterday. Twitter, Elon buys tw Twitter. Uh, he wants a decentralized communications protocol. That's the future. That's what Alter's trying to build. Uh, Elon's trying to build it from the top down. We're trying to build it from the bottom up. Right? There's, uh, it's, it's happening. Uh, Apple, uh, 
November 15th, that's literally yesterday, uh, stablecoin issuer Circle says they, uh, USDC, the stablecoin, um, tied to dollar, one USDC, one dollar, they're now tied one to one, one's a token, one's not a token. Um, Apple is now gonna accept it with Apple Pay. You know, that's where we are in terms of the technology. These guys know what's coming, and they, they're setting up the infrastructure. They've been setting up for the infrastructure to do so, do so even though we're here. All right. Um, it, the market's definitely shaking out right now because of this guy. It's pretty intense. This guy, uh, VCs got, VCs, dude, Tom Brady, Tom Brady was in this scandal in terms of like this guy somehow convinced all these people to trust him that this is the future of crypto. And man, I feel for the guy. So anyways, brief history of Web3. <clears throat> I gave you where we're at right now in the present, and then I'm gonna give you a little bit of history. So we got Web1, Web2, Web3. Web1 being read only, so you got those static websites, you can read information, kind of like Wikipedia. You read a bunch of texts, that's how you inter interact with the uh, internet. We got Web2, read and write. So this is where you have applications you start to deal with. Um, like YouTube, where you post content, Facebook, you post content. All these applications, you can post your content too. But who makes the money? Right, we got, we got family, uh, we got, um, I'll talk about her later. Um, we got Web3, ownership. So this is where the future is going. They're saying, all right, if you're gonna contribute to the internet, you get to own a piece of it. And what does exactly that mean? Like, it's kind of hard to describe just by words if you're not already thinking in terms of ownership of the internet, right? So the first real life example is cryptocurrencies. You got Bitcoin leading the way, right? This is a bunch of people after 2008 uh, financial dish, uh, crash. I wasn't, I wasn't really paying attention, I'm too young. Uh, but in 2008, apparently it was really bad that you got some like geniuses thinking about better ways to to, to manage money, and they found a way to do it decentralized, and they found a way that it can be on, on a ledger where everybody can view and everybody can tr believe that it's true. They got that many people to believe it, right? And then their, their code hasn't broken once. That's the cryptography that we're dealing with, and that's Bitcoin, right? That's the very first one that led the way in terms of what can we build with blockchain. Right. So that's what you consider disruptive technology. The word disruptive is like you're, you're like coming in and and you're messing with somebody. Right. Um, that's what disrupting is. Bitcoin disrupted the markets. Right. Uh, trillions of dollars went into a new asset class never defined before, and people around the world are flocking to it because of the inflation and their world economies crumbling, right? It, it's not just the US, it's Nigeria, it's China, it's Hong Kong, it's, every, it's everywhere. So how does blockchain work? So how, how am I on time? Good, okay. I had a little interactive experience with y'all today on how to build a blockchain. So come do it with me, please. Shirt of the day blockchain. We're gonna create a blockchain that kind of, not, this is not exactly, this is trying to get, get you the idea of the, the feelings of what blockchain is. Shirt of the day blockchain. Every single day, I'm gonna wear a shirt, you're gonna tell me what color it is, all of you guys have to respond. All right, we got, uh, on the 14th, I got purple, I wore purple. On the 15th, I wore blue. Yesterday, I wore purple. What color am I wearing today? Green, I'm wearing green, guys. Nice job. You guys all saw that I was wearing green, you agreed on it, and then uh, you guys all know it. So those handbooks that you guys got as part of the package here, be sure to write green in it for November 17th, because uh, we're all gonna agree on that later. One of my friends, he's so smart, he's a front-end developer. He literally, as we were talking about it right now, he updated a homepage that said, Darren's wearing green today, guys, November 17th. And there's a specific transaction 
here that says Darren's wearing green with the timestamp and everything, maybe even including a picture of my face. This is the kind of system that we're building with Bitcoin, right? That feeling of trust where you know everybody in the room agrees with you because you guys all had visual proof. That is the kind of system and the kind of trust layer that's being built on Bitcoin. So for specifically a Bitcoin instance, if my wife were to send me one Bitcoin, right, that transaction is now on this ledger for everybody to prove. And everybody um, has the right incentives on making sure that the system runs correctly. Validators get incentivized to make sure they're doing the correct things. People get penalized if, um, if a validator does something incorrectly, right? There's incentive structures in place to make sure that the system runs correctly. And there's, the, the difficult part is the amount of energy, time, and resources that it would take to break this kind of system because it's backed by everybody. It's backed by humanity, right? That's the kind of systems that we're trying to build in Web3. Not just for currencies, for everything, right? Um, and so when people are, are kind of figuring, oh, what are the, all the use cases, all the use cases, well, who's done what, who's done what, people are figuring it out at the moment. There's teams doing this at the forefront of every angle. So you got crypto tokens. You got communities using tokens to govern economics, uh, to make sure, all right, for secret, we have a pool of funds to fund the next generation of developers. We have funds for launching, helping people launch apps on our platform. We have governance. Tokens are one token, one vote. So people who have stake in the game, they're the ones actually voting where the protocol goes because that's the kind of committed people you have working in Web3, people who care about governance. I never really understood governance. Like, uh, I wasn't much of a voter myself. It was like this way, that way, this way, that way, this way, that way. But then like, once you start joining Web3, that's, there's infighting. That's how, that's how much people are passionate about it. They're not only willing to have a conversation, they fight about it because they have such different opposing views, but they're passionate and respectful of one another, even though they're having these difficult conversations on where to go, how to progress the industry, right? Um, all right, we're gonna launch a token called the shirt token. This is actually the secret token logo, but uh, for today, it's the shirt token, right? Investors value this token at $10. They provide the liquidity to keep the, ba the markets balanced at that $10 mark, right? Um, from the governance perspective, we'll vote. We'll say we want the inflation to be 10%. Um, we're gonna set it at this, we can change it later if we wanted to uh, with a community vote. Set it at 10% because we wanna make sure our, our network is incentivized for people to come and reap some rewards, right? Our validators earn rewards because we want the people who are raising their hands to say you're wearing green, we want those guys to be incentivized to protect the network and to also uh, provide that trust layer that we all back, right? Not everybody here needs to be a validator, right? You can delegate your stake to specific validators who you believe will do a good job and who you believe are upholding the values of your community, right? Um, and you can, you can set the, uh, the different pools uh, to allocate funds to different resources. So now we have a token, the shirt token, all right? We can decide what we want to do with it. GQ just called me and said, hey man, the blockchain, like that guy um, on the shirt token site, that guy is setting fashion trends for the future. We're definitely investing in you guys. Our token just suddenly skyrockets, skyrockets with GQ being our partner. Because man, this, guy, this is a good looking guy. <clears throat> All right, so what's the point? Blockchain, what's the point specifically? Open and transparent, verifiable, decentralized, can be trusted. That's the point, all right? These systems all have blockchain at the fundamental base layer. I'm talking fast, I don't know. Am I good on time still? Good. Cool. Uh, smart contracts. How does smart contract work? Smart contract works like any other contract. Um, right now it's not legal, bi legally binding. In the future, I bet you it will be. There'll be lawyers waiting to, to, to do legal stuff on smart contracts. I promise you that. It's gonna be legal. Um, now these, these smart contracts are on blockchains. So not only do you have code, 
you have these snippets of code that are also on the blockchain. So everyone's saying, oh, that smart contract, that's how you were supposed to act. You didn't act that way. Uh, we're going to vote you out. You know, this is the kind of trust system, again, that we're building here in the Web3 space. Uh, these guys are smart contracts. Right? So Darren's t-shirt, smart contract. Uh, we have an auction house that says, if you put up 100 shirt tokens, you can buy the green shirt off his back, right? That smart contract is posted on the blockchain. A buyer sees the going rate and says, yo, I want to see him take his shirt off right now for 100, 100 shirt tokens. The smart contract, he, he executes on it. Instantly, I take off my shirt. I'm not taking it off for you guys right now. I'm just kidding. Um, but now that buyer has a green shirt that he holds in his wallet. He says, this is my green shirt. He was giving that amazing talk the other day, and he was wearing that green shirt. I can smell it on him. Like, he owns that digitally, digitally. I'm not giving him my actual shirt, right? That's his experience that he captured in a token. Kind of cool. So people are building these auction houses. Uh, people are building <coughs> DeFi platforms where people can trade. Uh, people are building lending platforms. Got them in a lot of trouble. It's not quite ready yet, right? Because Right now, they're, they're, they're kind of fluctuating between the collateralized, uncollateralized. How do you define who gets to be lended to? How, how, do, you have, how do you tie that to identity? Do you need a KYC, know your customer? Um, there's all these things that are being flushed out, but the direction is to a place where it replicates traditional finance. We're just at a point that we're, we're in the very early stages of this, so you guys, Whoever's here listening, you guys are some very smart people uh, who are in the forefront of this uh, investment space. So, um, Catherine sends 100, uh, she, she sends me a shirt, I already talked about this. Uh, the person got my shirt off the back, gotcha. All right, so what's the point? Uh, trustless execution, you have smart contracts that execute immediately, no intermediaries, you don't need people in the middle. Right? It's extremely fast, extremely scalable, because it'll be at the edge of all computing. Right? Um, and then it'll unlock a thousand different use cases. It'll allow, allow applications to talk to other applications. That's what we're trying to build at Alter. Um, Web3 use cases. So we got Tarantino NFT, Secret Network, uh, worked on a project with Quentin Tarantino to fight Miramax on their, on their property, intellectual, the intellectual property of Quentin Tarantino himself, he had a manuscript uh, that had the original Pulp Fiction described to a T. He scanned it. it was, nobody had ever seen it before, other than Quentin Tarantino himself. He scanned it, uh, put it in the private metadata of, on a secret NFT, only on Secret Network, posted it, sold for a million dollars. And then Miramax came over there and said, yo, Pulp Fiction, that's our thing. Like, that's, you can't even, those are our rights. Those are his intellectual rights, nobody's seen it. He wrote it down on a paper, that's his thing. Anyways, uh, they sued him, they settled. Uh, I don't know what's going on right there with, with them right now, but uh, that's, the kind of, that's the kind of things you're building in this space because you're, you're, you're fighting for artists. Like you're, you're, you're trying to make a better space so that the creators get value back. Because like right now, they don't. Uh, you got real estate, you got intellectual property, you got music, you got playing cards, you got gaming, you got scientific uh, science. If you do a research thing, you, get, you, you discover something brand new, right? You can tokenize your, your discovery and then sell it to people, and then they profit off of your, your thoughts. Isn't that kind of cool? Like, um, tokenizing people's thoughts. Um, NFT communities, people think it's just JPEG. It's not just JPEG, it's about a community. So if you have people who are like um, really advocate about privacy, they're really part of the, the secret network vision, they buy it anon. That's the, that's the if, you, if you know, like that's the number one uh, NFT on secret network right now. Because these guys, they value the privacy. They're, they're the ones that are proponents of it. And people who have an anon know that, oh, you're, you're, you stand for privacy, I get you. You're part of this community, I get you, like, we're friends, you know? Because maybe another NFT community has a separate one that is also privacy-oriented, but you know the communities talk, right? 
uh, these, these communities can be gated by conversations. You get into very specific niche conversations about the market by being in a nine. Like that's the kind of, uh, that's the kind of tech that, uh, that why NFTs are important, right? Because you get those very private conversations if you're not part of that community. Uh, decentralized music. Like we just worked with Audius the other day, which is insane. As I'm talking as Alter, right? They're saying they're launching a bunch. Um, so Audius has uh, their decentralized platform for music. They host all of these great artists. Right now they're trying to see if it gains traction, right? Um, artists earn audio token by producing music so that as audio grows, the, the music creators also benefit from the growth of the platform, right? That's Audius. Um, we're, we were working with them uh, for their communications because we're trying to build a communications protocol for them, for artists, but we don't know where they may need communications, but we know we have the protocol for it. So if you want to build something in communications for Audius, you come to Alter, right? That's what we do. Crypto gaming, there's a guy here doing Splinter games, Splinter lands, sorry, where you can battle each other. And as you battle each other, you earn as you, you, you're playing the game so that you feel incentivized to continue playing the game because you're actually reaping the rewards of a growing ecosystem of games. Uh, gamers would love this, right? Uh, right now, there's different types of games being, uh, being pushed out there. There are games that are, are like Fortnite, uh, Play Bushy is one of them. Uh, being launched on Secret Network. These are like, they're just the next level of gaming. De DeFi, we talked about DeFi. <coughs> you got swaps. You got swaps with private assets. Dude, in this space, they're coming after privacy right now. They're like, yo, we get the tokens. They give us full transparency over every single dollar you spend. We like that, right? Uh, privacy tokens, <coughs> the EU is trying to ban them. Like they're saying, you don't deserve your privacy. You're, you're, uh, every, I want to see every little transaction you ever made. They sound like China. China launched their CBDC and is tracking everybody's finances. Like they're worried about money laundering, right? But Secret provides an option for that because Secret's not, a oh, Secret is a public token, right? It's not a private privacy token. But Secret has the smart contracts that allow certain parts of the metadata to be protected and private like your name tied to your address, right? You don't want everyone to know you own four Bitcoins and you live at 4-2, oh, I don't want to say my actual address, sorry. Uh, you, you get the point, like you don't, want, you don't want to be doxxed in this kind of space. So you have something like secret, you have public transparent tokens that have already been vetted by the SEC, um, that like transfers or whatever, and then you have the privacy aspect where you can protect specific financial details. Those specific financial details can be future given to an auditor so you can see the traceability that the blockchain provides. But you have to have that level of access <coughs> control. Otherwise, like everyone listening to this presentation is gonna know my finances, and I really don't want that for the safety of myself and for Kat, my wife. You got orgs being built up. The next level, it's not LLC anymore, it's gonna be DAO. Uh, that's what they're calling it. It's kind of cool, DAO. You know, um, these are just people like, like let's say that all, all of us we want to sh we really we really are focused about building this shirt company. You know, this shirt blockchain. We think it has a, a future, and we collectively want to form an organization where we have our to our own token, our own voting, our own economics, and uh, that's we can form a DAO. We don't have to go through that legal legal loophole, right? But that's the thing. In the future, it'll be legal DAOs. Like lawyers are gonna be working on DAO structures. Like that's the future, you know? But right now it's like, oh, are they gonna, what, what's the, is it gonna be an LLC? Is it gonna be a DAO? Am I doing something wrong? I don't wanna do something wrong. I don't wanna, like, I'm trying to do my best here, but nobody's giving any, any clarity. You know, that's how the space is working out right now. So we got DAOs voting on all these governance proposals uh, to how to better enhance uh, the, the, the blockchain. The first one that passed, I think, yesterday, oops. The, the one that's being over here that's passed right now is a metaverse team trying to get some exposure to Secret Network uh, by saying, hey, on our platform, um, in our metaverse universe, 
uh, Secret Network's gonna have a place in it. I believe it has a place in it. And we want you to be part of our vision. So they, po they pitched a proposal for us to all vote on. I think it's a good one. It opens up another vertical uh, for our, our network. Uh, Lorem Epsom Metaverse team is building that. And we just voted, say, oh, we'll give them 18,000 uh, USD, which is the equivalent of something around like 28,000 secret, something like that. We're saying, okay, go for it. Uh, we trust and we hope you continue to build with us because um, we're trying to build a network of applications, an ecosystem of privacy preserving applications that will lead the future of the internet. Because the most important thing right now is your data privacy. Like you talk about ownership, you have ownership of crypto, but then you also have the ownership of your data that nobody's really thinking about because it's kind of a hard concept to kind of contextualize. But these guys are front running, front running all of that. They're making sure that your data is safe. Um, and so that's what they're doing. Very ethos driven Web3 is, right? We are actively trying to build the future of the internet. That's what we're doing, right? We come up with questions that, they basically reinvented how finance is done for a decentralized way. They're like building the future of the internet. Like these are the guys that are doing it. So we the people, like those are the guys that were doing it. Like those are the guys that were thinking about all these questions as they were pushing us forward. And so gone are gonna be the closed platforms that only talk to one, uh, to only gather the energy themselves only reap the benefit off of our data, sell it all over the place, sell it to second marketers. Like, it gets sold so many times. I get spammed all the time. Like the, the data economy is not the way to go. The economy, the way to go is incentivizing creators because they're the ones that give us the value. You know, Finding those intersections of different services for a wider community you believe in, that's where the value's at. We have to build systems that have that in place with the under fundamental trust layer so people can understand that that's what's being built all around the world. Like I'm not gonna be convincing someone in Stockholm that I'm building something legit. He can see it for himself. He, can, he believes in the project and we also um, are partners, so it's great. Metaverse, how does the metaverse play into? Metaverse is the future of how we experience the internet. Um, it's just gonna happen, right? But Metaverse itself is another vertical, another, another tool, right, that we can use. The important part, again, is the values of Web3. So there's gonna be teams like Facebook who are saying, we're the Metaverse, you know? Uh, are, they, are they the Web3 version of the Metaverse or are they another closed, I don't know. I, wanna, I, don't, wanna, I don't wanna say Web2, like I don't wanna put them in a box, but you get what I'm saying. Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, like that's a scary thing. I, have, I don't have a lot of expertise in that area, but like I think it, I kind of think about it as compounders. Like whatever our direction our brain is going, it's gonna compound it, you know, because it sees that that's the good thing to do and it does it, does it, does it. Like I don't know if that's actually what it does, but every, tools are gonna be used, right? AI would also be a tool. So are we building a closed, data-driven community and then using AI to extrapolate that? Is that what we're doing? Or are we building trusted, trusted platforms where everybody can feel included and then using AI to exacerbate, uh, to, not exacerbate, exacerbate to the other side, to make that better, enhance it, right? Misha, Misha Da Vinci, great follow on Twitter. She's a thought leader in the space, um, yeah. No, this, this, this diagram here is from her. Like I thought the, the art thing was fantastic. Great use of a visual analogy, right? You got all your data being compacted into this black ball, right? And then you got an open space, very bright, hopeful, amazing. So where do you go for here? We basically start from scratch. We can envision better worlds uh, from scratch. Um, Again, where do you place the value, right? Um, what are your, what are your, what's your ethos? Like, you gotta build from there, otherwise what are you building, right? You gotta flow with innovation because there's gonna be a lot of innovation. This, this space moves so much faster than any other space ever. 
like uh, smart contracts just came out in like how long ago? And then there's already DeFi. There's already all these different use cases for it. It's only going to exponentially get better. Um, get involved. Join a community. Uh, see what you believe in. Um, see what you stand for. That's what Web3 is about. Like, um, it's not always easy to be so responsible and so conscious of uh, all the decisions you're putting into it. Um, but it's, it's, it's worth it uh, if you find the community that also um, strives to meet those same kind of standards. You know? <clears throat> so Secret. Uh, Secret's the only public blockchain with smart contracts that provide, preserve your data privacy. They've been on it for a while. Um, again, it's not a privacy token. Um, it's auditable. SCRT token is public and auditable, right? They're dealing with that specifically right now from the EU is trying to fight that, saying it's a privacy token. It's not. Um, the smart contracts do, however, protect your privacy, right? Uh, it allows auditors, um, if you provide them your uh, private key or whatever, they can view it. Um, you can give them permits to do that. Um, that's what they're building right now. Alter, right now we're a decentralized communications protocol, right? Uh, built using Secret Network's smart contract technology. Again, what the DOD was building for the Department of, the US Marines were building for the Department of Defense for their latest hackathon, one first place. Again, this is the same thing that we're building. Uh, we're just building um, the protocol layer so that private communications can, can be discussed. And we're also uh, trying to pivot to become a network. Right? So if you guys want to um, support that, like we're taking investors too. You know? uh, but the pivot I'm talking about is we're trying to help the next generation of enterprise understand how blockchains work from the real, the, the real Web3 stance. Right? We're trying to help these new startups find their footing, uh, accelerate them. We've already partnered, partnered with uh, startup associations from around the world. Uh, we're doing it. We're going to be the funnel in which people find uh, Web3 is through Web 2.5, right? So that's why I'm actually here to talk to you. Uh, these two sponsored, sponsored me to be here. Uh, it was a privilege. I feel really blessed taking questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, is there anything that could stop me? Let's say I hate purple people, purple-skinned people, mm -hmm. and I live in a community where, you know, maybe I find some friends who also hate purple-skinned people, and we just set up our own little uh, decentralized finance where it will offer you lower interest rates mm -hmm. if you can prove you're not purple-skinned so we can get non-purple-skinned people in our community. Mm -hmm. Is there anything to stop me from doing that? Uh, interesting analogy. Um, to be honest, like, if those kind of communities do get created, um, like, that's a very sensitive area, right, that does warrant a lot of thought. Um, and like you mentioned, I don't think there is a lot of thought always being placed there when there are um, other incentives to reap a lot of money, right? Uh, and so those are the kind of considerations that you want to make sure, right? Should we be open and public for everybody? Uh, our communication community is going to be their own thing. Um, like, we don't know where that's going to go. But what we do know is that by having hope and by funding and investing in the teams that aren't doing that, that's how you grow for the future. For, because for every single sin, you have grace compounded, right? So that's, that's where we want to go. We want to be hopeful. We want to invest the people who are building the right things. And uh, that's what we, what we want to push forward for. Another question? Yes. Would you, can you go back to, uh, to Secret? Uh, OK, so, so Secret, uh, there's, a, there's a contract which keeps uh, specific data Mm -hmm. Not revealed. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to Alter, result, uh, so I'm a little confused on the, what, what Alter is doing separate from what Secret uh, would already do in terms of. 
So right now, right now we're the communications protocol that's leveraging secret network, right? We're a DAP, okay, gotcha. uh, an application that's built on it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but we're pivoting also as an enterprise solution for other blockchains to be able to automatically get smart contract feasibilities. So let's say a Web2 application wants to uh, start building and be compatible with the greater Web3 ecosystem that's coming. Uh, Walter will walk them through that process, help them encapsulate their application so they're protected in this new space, and deliver them so that they're now compatible with all these other applications. Uh, we're doing the hand-holding, we're doing the experience, we're doing the educating of their startups. Um, that's the network, right? Because it's, again, it's not a specific tool, right? It's the ability to adopt and to the innovation. It won't be, DeFi won't be the, the, the new thing on the block in two years' time, I guarantee it. DeFi, DeFi will be copied and pasted a lot everywhere. It's already being done, right? It's about figuring out what is the best one, how do you guide these new people to get to the, join the right community, and should they want to pivot communities, they should be able to do that, because that's their right to do so. They can move from one community to another one that grows, right? Alter wants to help them in that transition process so that they uh, they can get there safely and securely. So I'm, I'm just, I'm brand new to this, I don't really know even though I'm very old. Mm -hmm. uh, are, we, are, we going, are we going into a direction where people will make their living um, no longer dealing That's that. Well, the space is getting rich, everybody. Yeah. So everybody's interacting in this digital world, and what's going to happen to the touch? Mm -hmm. I mean, the Catholic Church is based on Jesus Christ became a human being and became, became flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. And everything we do, sacraments, etc., has to deal with touching the physical world mm -hmm. to bring spiritual world. <coughs> I, I, I completely... Are we, are we going to be incentivizing people from not touching each other anymore? <laughs> the phrasing. Um, I, think, I think balance, right? What you painted is a very lonely world, yeah. right? That's Ready Player One, the book. If you haven't read it, it's a great book. It's uh, youth, uh, youth uh, sci-fi, you know? Um, it talks about being all in that world and then getting out of touch with the physical existence of your reality. Uh, it's going to be a balance because the internet's still going to be a thing, right. right? The metaverse is still going to be a thing, but right? Actually, what what can gravitate to it because that's where the money is. No, so so Web three, the idea, right, is to be able to incentivize the people to be able to create value, not be extrapolated. Right, because metaverse, it's a tool again, right? Uh, somebody can use it, another person can use it, one person can do it well, one person can't do it well. Not well, but with value, values, right? Um, that's the distinction. So I agree with you, there has to be a balance. Good question. Come to an end, Darren. Big hand for Darren. Thank you so much. Thank you. Blessed to be here.